Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks and uh, welcome to the city of Jaén in the autonomous community of Andalusia here in Spain in the south of the country and uh, that is the city that we are going to discover. So uh, let's go down there and check the city out. Okay, so I'm now down in the main part of Jaén. I'm on my way to the city center to look at the cathedral and some other monuments and uh, I've seen this tram stop here. Uh, not sure if the trams are working so I'll wait here and see but uh, no I'm only joking this uh, tram does not work it's been out of action since around 2011 I think and as we can see up there it says that it uh, is still being tested so not sure when this fantastic tram line this expensive tram line is going to be up and running but uh, I'm going to go and have to take the bus Bus to the centre. Okay, now I've made it to the top of the city and that's one thing I'm going to say about this city. It is very, very hilly indeed. Uh, a fair bus ride to get up to the top here where the cathedral is, which is this building that I have here to my right. And uh, this is where we're going to start today's video about this city, Jaén, in the south of Spain. So uh, let's go. Now, if you're not familiar with the city of Jaén, it is the capital city of the province of Jaén, one of the eight provinces in the autonomous community of Andalusia. Now, I'm not going to name every province in this autonomous community, but believe me, there are eight of them, and uh, Jaén, one of the provinces, and this city is the capital of that province, if that makes sense. Around 112,000 people, and we are bang smack in olive oil territory. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that this is the area in Spain which produces the most olive oil in the country but uh, don't quote me on that and the idea today is to go for a walk around this city starting at the top here making my way back down to where my hotel is taking in some of the sites like for example the uh, cathedral that I have here to my left and I'll just turn around so you can get another glimpse of this magnificent building here. There it is. Now I would say that Jaén is one of the lesser known cities in Andalusia. Everybody knows Seville, everybody knows Malaga, everybody knows Córdoba, but not everybody knows Jaén. And that's why I'm here. I want to see what this city's like, whether it is a decent city or not, from a quality of life point of view, and if it is a city that people should consider if they're considering moving to Spain in the near future, if Jaén is a city for you. So uh, that's one of the main objectives today too. And from what I've seen so far, this is a decent city. Is it as good as Seville? Is it as good as Córdoba? Obviously not, doesn't have the population or the historical monuments, but it is a decent city and that could interest you. Now the population of Jaén is around 110, 111,000 people. So it's not a huge city. If we uh, put that into comparison where I live on the outskirts of Madrid in a small city, we're about 105,000 people. So Jaén, not much bigger than that, but uh, a completely different city to the one where I live, basically because this is a historic city, lots of things to see and do unlike the uh, city where I live. Now you can get an idea of the geography of this part of Spain, the type of terrain that surrounds Jaén. Very, very hilly indeed. And up on the top of that hill there, where you can see the cross, is where I began the video today. And that is the Catalina Castle, the Santa Catalina Castle, or St. Kate's Castle, I think it would be in English. And uh, to get up there, Wow, not easy. But hills like that basically surround one side of this city. The other side of the city is flat, and on one side you've got hills like that, which lead up to magnificent buildings like that castle. And this shot here will give you an idea of what type of hills we're dealing with here. Very, very steep indeed. Now we'll get an idea for the day today here. It is Tuesday the 16th of April. This is what the locals are out doing today. The local people here from Jaén going about their day-to-day -day 
doing their shopping, doing their chores. And it's in the afternoons when most Spanish people get out and about to do their exercise. They've come home from work, they've come home from school, and they're out and about enjoying the fantastic afternoon sun. Now it's not too hot at the moment, it's only around 27, 28 degrees Celsius, but again, it is the 16th of April. So we're still in spring, and uh, that's something that I'm gonna talk about too in just a moment, and that is the weather in this part of Spain, especially the very, very hot summers. Now, as you've probably seen, this is a city where the car is king. There are no bicycles in this city. There's no bicycle scheme. There's no council bikes for you to hire. I've seen a few people on bicycles getting up the hills. Pretty, pretty difficult thing to do. And uh, taxis, buses, car, walking. That's the way people get around this town. I caught a bus, as you guys saw. I waited about five minutes for the bus, not too long. And it was cheap. It was one euro to get from the bottom of the city to the top of the city. So I don't think that's expensive. But then again, if you had to do that five or six times a day, it could put a hole in your pocket. And there is another magnificent view of the cathedral. Turn the camera around and you can see what this city has to offer. Now I'll get the topic of weather out of the way quickly. Basically, in the summer months here, it is unbearably hot. Uh, temperatures in the high 30s, low 40s, a lot of the days, and uh, extremely uncomfortable. Hot nighttime temperatures, hot daytime temperatures. Basically, this is a hot city. And I reckon that if you came here in the month of August, it would be almost empty, as the majority of people would have taken off to the beach. The beaches of Malaga, I think, are the beaches of choice for the people from this city. They head down there a couple of hours by car to cool off on those hot summer days, especially at weekends. Now Jaén is also a university city, an important university in this part of Spain, and that gives the city a lot of life as well, as there are lots of students around the town enjoying the nightlife activities, enjoying the bars, enjoying the restaurants. So as I said, plenty of life because of that student activity. That's a pro. Now when it comes to getting to and from this city, we're about three and a half hours by car from Madrid, about two hours, I think, by car from Malaga. You can get here by train, you can get here by bus, but I think car is the best way to get to this city. There's no airport, as far as I know, uh, no planes coming in, or at least that's what Google told me. You can't catch a plane here, so uh, other forms of transport would be the best way to get to and from the city of Jaén. Now, as you guys know, I'm on the road quite a bit, and I've also mentioned over the journey that I like to use a VPN when I'm on the road traveling. What is a VPN, you ask? Well, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and the VPN that I use is one called Nord, and that's the one that I recommend. And basically what a VPN does is that it allows you to surf the internet safely no matter where you are. You can connect to the internet without having to worry about hackers stealing your data, and that is very, very important. Because the issue is, when you're traveling from hotel to hotel, connecting to different Wi-Fi's, Wi-Fi's that you are not familiar with, there's always a risk that somebody could steal your data, and that's when Nord VPN is an absolute must. And let's not forget the fact that you can access foreign content, content that might be geo-blocked when you're here in Spain with NordVPN. So for example, if you want to connect to US Netflix, if you want to connect to the BBC iPlayer, you can do that with NordVPN so you can keep up with your favorite shows. Another pro. And Nord also allows you to connect simultaneously with various devices. You can connect with your phone, with your tablet, with your PC, with your Mac, you can connect all at the same time with different devices on Nord. Now Nord currently has an exclusive deal. If you get a two year plan with Nord, they'll throw in an extra four months on top. So uh, what are you waiting for? So to get that exclusive deal, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Spain Speaks and take advantage of that offer. And remember that it's risk free with that 30 day money back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below and take the Nord offer. Now back to the video. 
Now, when it comes to language, the language in this part of Spain, of course, is Castilian Spanish, no other language. However, they do have quite a peculiar accent. Not easy to understand. I had trouble understanding some people when I was speaking to them, and also people had trouble understanding my Spanish, because I obviously don't speak in a way that they are used to. So the good news is, for speakers of Castilian Spanish, you can communicate very easily here. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video the topic of olive oil and I said that this is perhaps the olive oil mecca in Spain, not only in Spain but perhaps in the world. Lots of oil comes from this part of the country and uh, some people say that the best oil in Spain comes from Jaén. I don't know if that is true or not but you can find specialty oil shops that sell a very, very tasty olive oil. Quite expensive but very, very tasty nonetheless. And as we know the price of olive oil currently at record highs, never been as high as the price is currently, uh, but I'm hoping that I can find a decent drop of olive oil for a decent price in this part of Spain. So that's what I'm going to look for tomorrow. Now I'm going to say that one thing I like about this city, as with many other cities here in Spain, are these little squares or plazas as they are known, where you can come on a hot day, sit down, have a drink, enjoy the orange trees, enjoy the fountains, and uh, basically kick back and enjoy life here in Andalusia. Now when it comes to food and drink, this is not one of the most famous parts in the country for food and drink. In fact, I think it's fairly stock standard. There are some uh, dishes unique to this part part of the country. Uh, one dish called pipirana for example, uh, so you can check that one out. But uh, there's no wine I don't think here in Jaén. Uh, beer you can get of course, I think the majority of people would drink beer. And also some of those other wines from the south of Spain, uh, the Jerez wines and things like that I imagine are also popular here. The food is good, don't get me wrong, there is apparently a great tapas culture which I'm going to try out later tonight. So when it comes to food and drink, not at the top of the list, but uh, good nonetheless. But what I will say about food and drink in this part of the world is that it follows the Mediterranean diet, so if you want to take care of your health, uh, I'd recommend trying the Mediterranean diet, and this is a place that you can do it. Now when it comes to cost of living, I would say that Jaén is not one of the more expensive cities in Spain. In fact, I think it would be one of the cheapest cities when it comes to cost of living. Andalusia in general is a fairly cheap autonomous community, especially if you compare it to places like Madrid, so uh, cost of living shouldn't be a worry. Rental prices wouldn't be all that expensive, I don't think. Eating out wouldn't be all that expensive, so uh, cost of living here a pro also. Now this is something that you'll also see in a lot of cities down here in Andalusia. If you've been to Cordoba, if you've been to Seville, you would have seen these orange trees. As you can see, oranges on there at the moment. I don't think you can pick the oranges and eat them. I think they're a little bit sour, but uh, apparently they turn these oranges into marmalade. Now the building we have in front of us is the Jaén Bull Ring. I imagine that bulls in this part of Spain are very, very popular. Andalusia in general, I know that bulls are still popular. In other parts of the country, not so. But uh, I imagine that when the bullfighting season comes around, this place is absolutely packed with the locals. And this bull ring was built in 1962. And maybe it was Franco himself who came here in 1962 and cut the opening ribbon. No idea. Now, this is the more modern part of the city. We can see here the type of buildings that we have. Residential buildings, of course. And this is one of the main avenues here in this city. And a really busy place as far as not only people, but also traffic as well. Demographics, I would say that it's a, a bit of a mix. I've seen plenty of kids about. I've seen plenty of uh, older 
people around as well. I've seen plenty of uh, teenagers, 20 year olds, 30 year olds, so a real mix as far as demographics is concerned. But uh, what I will say is that this is a part of Spain where the younger generations tend to move to places where there are more jobs. And I'll talk about the economy in a minute. Now here we have the bus station, the Jaén bus station. There's also a train station, but if you came to this city by bus, this is where you would be dropped off bang smack in the middle of the city so you could get to wherever you need to go quickly we can see there entrada de viajeros the uh, passenger entrance we'll go inside and have a look because the station looks to be a fairly old station with uh, history as well this is where they would have sold magazines back in the day tobacco as well newspapers we can see people here waiting for their bus and this is the uh, high-end bus station now there's a train station as well because as i mentioned before you can get here by train but i'm not sure exactly where the train station is located uh, how far away it is from here cultural center now here's this tram line which as i said doesn't work there were plans to get it started up again but obviously there's no money for that or it's just too difficult to do it did work for a while when things were booming here in spain but of course they must have ran out of money and cancelled the tram service, which is a shame because it would be an easy way to get up these hills by tram, but unfortunately, not in service. African street sellers selling their things, handbags and things like that, right in front of government buildings. But of course, as long as the cops don't come around, they shouldn't have an issue. Look at this nice bar here. I think it's time for a refreshment. What do you think? Si me pones una caña, por favor. Cualquiera, Victoria, Turia, Burdan. Vale, ¿de qué tamaño son? ¿Ese que es, que es caña? Victoria, la seguimos en este formato. Turia en este y Burdan en este. Vale, pues voy a tomar esta copa aquí con Victoria, por favor. Muy bien, muchas gracias. ¿Qué te debo? Serían 260. Ahora mismo. Now, I'm going to be honest, there's nothing like a cold beer after walking around a city on a 30 degree temperature day. Cheers. And for the price, two euro sixty, a bargain. And also a tapper for the price. You can't go wrong. Now to give you an idea of the cost of living here in Jaén, which I spoke about before, that beer and tapper cost me two euro sixty. Now in Madrid, where I live, minimum three fifty, and in the center of Madrid, probably you'd pay around four euros for that at a place like that, especially sitting outdoors on one of these terraced areas. Fantastic. Now, when it comes to the economy, this is a services city, services that feed the 111,000 people that uh, live here. There would also be agriculture in the surrounding areas, which would be also important. And I'm sure that there is some industry, but not a lot of industry, I don't think. Government services, that would be a fairly big part of the economy. And uh, also private services, like the shops that we see on the uh, main streets here. So when it comes to the economy, that's what's going on here in Jaén. And let's not forget the all important olive oil industry, which uh, as I mentioned before, Jaén is the epicenter of that industry, not only here in Spain, but also worldwide. And another thing I have liked about Jaén is that it seems to be a safe city. Not sure what the crime statistics are here, but I've walked around all day, haven't seen a beggar, nobody's bothered me, haven't seen any type of street crime at all. So uh, that is a pro. But of course, as with all cities in Spain, there would be good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods. So uh, you still got to be careful. Now on that note, I'm going to wrap this video from high end up. All I can say is that from what I've seen so far, this is a fantastic city here in Andalusia. Not a big city, around 111,000 people, as I said before. So a manageable city. One of the cons that I see about this city is that everything is either uphill or downhill. So you would have to get used to that. But apart from that, it is a decent city when it comes to especially quality of life. The weather, summers are hot, but the rest of the year is bearable. So that's also a pro. Plenty of things to see and do, not only in the capital city here, but also in towns and cities around Jaén. You've got places like Baeza and Ubeda, 
which are not far away from here, which are worth a visit. So plenty of things to do in the area. And there's also a mountain range close by, the Cathola mountain range, if you like to get out and about, get on your bike, do exercise, hiking, and things like that. The Hayen province is very, very good. So yes, Hayen is a city that I would recommend, whether you're planning to come and visit this city, or whether you're looking for a city to live in here in Spain, this is a city that I would recommend. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, please, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego from Jaén, Andalucía. I'm just waiting on a tram.